come back to Dynamite's concepts. What we're looking at today is solution for January um, 2022 60 examination. It's number 10, um, titled Vector and Matrices. So it reads, three points O, P, and R are shown on the grid below. O is the origin. <clears throat> so we are seeing this here. All right, here are the questions. It says, right. So the question I want us to write the position vector R, position vector of R, O, R, in the form A, B, as you could see here. All right, so O, R, we'll be looking at this. Talking about this from O to R, right? Talking about that vector from O to R right there. Um, basically, what we can do is to quickly, if we are in a position vector system, the coordinates of the point, in this case, R, will determine the position vector. And the point R is actually 5, 1, right? So the point R is 5, 1, which means that from O, to R, the position vector OR will be 5, 1. The coordinates of the point R, in this case, will help us to determine the position vector from O to the point. So we have 1, 5. First question. Second question says, another point Q is located in such a way that from Q to R, is two negative four. Using the information, plot the point Q. So we want to use this information. So the information is suggesting that from Q to R is two negative four. All right, let's take a look at this. So we are suggesting here that they're saying that from Q to R is two negative four. Now, if I am at R, if I want to know where Q is, I could do the inverse of this, all right? So I could go reverse direction. So if I'm going to go from R back to Q in the opposite direction, then I would have to change. I'm just talking about finding where Q is. I am at R now, and it's 2, negative 4 from Q to R. If I'm going to go the opposite direction, so I'm going to take the inverse of the vector. Therefore, I'm going negative 2, positive 4, and it's going to take me back to where Q is. For example, I'm going to be moving like this. Negative 2 would suggest that I'm going to be moving horizontally two places to the left. 1, 2. And positive 4 means I'm going to go vertically four places up. 1, 2 three, four. So this is where Q is. So it simply means that I could just walk myself backwards and I end up to my Q. So this is the point Q right here. So the point Q, as you could see, is three, five, all right? The coordinate of V is three, five. This, that's where it is right now. And if you could double check it, you'll see that it really takes you there. Two to the right, one, two, and four down, one, two, three, four. And we would have landed at R. So we have located Q. All right. All right. So we'll plot the point Q there. Using this information, plot the point Q on graph. So we wanted to plot the point Q, and we did so. I could just highlight it one more time right there. All right, good. So let us look at the next question. All right. So now we're required. We're required to determine the. We're required to determine the magnitude of QR. It means then that QR. Remember, we were told that QR. We got QR from the beginning to be. 2, negative 4. We got that. 
All right, so to determine the magnitude, the magnitude of QR is just to apply the Pythagoras theory. So we're talking about two square plus negative four square. And this is four plus 16. And that will leave us with the root of 20 units. Right. So the root of 20 units, that is um, our magnitude of QR, root 20. That's about 4 point. So if you want to write some decimal, it's approximately 4.47 units. That's the magnitude of QR. Follow-up question says, show by calculation that OPQR is a parallelogram. Let's go back to the diagram. All right. OPQR. So let's connect all the points. I'm going to create this. All right, good. So they want us to show by calculation that OPQR is a parallelogram. So... Mm -hmm. So definitely there are certain things that we have here. We're just going to see if we could write down a few things that we have, right? All right, so if we wanna show that OPQR is a parallelogram, then there are certain decisions that we have to, to make, right? Certain things that we have to know. For example, opposite sides of the parallelogram must be um, equal, all right? And parallel, so there should, be, be the same. In this case, opposite sides should be the same. For example, um, from P to Q should be the same as from O to R. Also, uh, from O to P should be the same as from R to Q, all right? So we're looking at those. So let me put the arrows on it. So P to Q must be the same as O to R in that same direction. And O to P must be the same as R to Q. So let us quickly write those, let's quickly write those um, vectors, right? So from O, O, P, O, P, OP, which is this one, is negative 2, 4, all right? So this one is OP. OP is negative 2, 4. And then we're seeing where RQ, as you could see here, we found that negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's negative 2, 4 as well, all right? So RQ is negative 2, 4. So we're seeing there that those equal. So we are checking off. We just checked off that. We checked off that. Let's look at PQ. PQ. So PQ, we're moving 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Positive 5, positive 1. So PQ is positive 5, positive 1. So PQ equal to 5, 1. So let's, let us check OR. And OR, it's already there. You can see this, it's already there. It's 5, 1. So OR is 5, 1. Double checking those. So we did check this and we did check that. So now we have it. So we're just going to show a quick calculation. All right. Now opposite sides must be equal. So we're going to check for equality, all right? Definitely you're seeing that it will be equal, but we're just gonna check it, all right? So then the magnitude of each, in other words, OP, the magnitude of OP must equal to the magnitude of QR, right? So we're gonna check that now, but literally we're seeing that, right? We're seeing it's the same numbers. So we're talking about negative two square plus four, Square, if we should take the square root of that, 
what we're getting, we're getting 4 plus 16 square root. We are getting the root of 20. All right. So we are saying that OP magnitude is equal to OR magnitude, which is equal to the root of 20. Because we could do one check because it's the same numbers I'm checking. So we're checking by calculation. So we see that now they are the same length. Next one we're going to check off is P, Q, magnitude should be equal to O, R, magnitude. All right, so let's take the components out around 5, 1. So we are talking about the root of 5 square plus 1 square, and this is going to give us 25 plus 1, and this is definitely the root of 26, and this root 26 is for both, right? So we're seeing here where we have the same, both of them would be the root of 26 here. So definitely by calculation, you could see that OPQR is really a parallelogram because opposite sides are parallel, the same things, and they're actually equal, right? So that would have proven that. Big section, it says, it says here, calculate the value of X and the value of Y. All right. So basically, in order to do that, what we want to do is, is that we want to quickly carry out, just carry out these operations. So we are multiplying on the left side here. There's a multiplication going on. So we're going to carry out that. So remember, we multiply rows by columns. So I'm going to highlight my rows. These are my rows. Um, so this is the top one, that's row one, bottom one, that's row two. And I'm going to multiply all the rows by all the columns. So in the other matrix, so here are my other columns. So we have column one, we have column two. So in this multiplication, we're going to take the format of this. So it's going to be like this. Um, so row one will multiply by column one. Then row one, we multiply by column two. Then row two, we multiply by column one. Then row two, we multiply by column two. And we're going to be getting the shape like that. So let's carry out this multiplication. We're talking about one times negative four. So we're talking about this times that. We're going to be adding that to five times two. So it's row by column, right? Row by column. All right. So that's that piece. Then we're going to go same row with the next column. So it's going to be one times one plus five times nine. All right. So let's go with that. So it's going to be one times one plus five times nine. Row two, two times negative four plus y times 2, and then row 2 again with column 2, 2 times 1 plus y times 9. All right, so there it is. We have carried out that, and it's going to equal to x, 46, 6, 65. So we're going to just make sure that everything is looking the same. So let's um, fix up this. So we're on the left side here. Like this. What are we talking about here? We're talking about what? negative 4 plus 10. This is 1 plus 45. We have negative 8 plus negative 8. Let me fix that. Negative 8 plus 2y. And then we're talking about 2 plus 9y. We have that. And then this is equal to x, 46, 6, 65. All right? So we are seeing all of that there. Now, putting it together, we're looking at 6, 46, negative 8 plus 2y, 2 plus 9y. We are seeing that, and that's going to equal to x, 46, 6, 65. When you look at the responses, two matrices are equal, x 
is corresponding with the spot six, so x is equal to six. In order to work out y, we have two options. We could take option one. We only need to do one. So option one, we could equate negative eight plus two y. We could equate that to six, meaning I'm equating these two ideas here, right? So I could solve for y there by adding, adding my eight to both sides. I'm going to get 2y is equal to 14 divided by 2 divided by 2y is equal to 7. So that's, that's one of the things. So y is equal to 7. And um, what we could do as well is do another solution here. So y is equal to 7. Let us look on option 2 to see. So in option two, I could have used, so it's the only one we need to do, but I'm just saying, we could have used two plus nine y equals 65, and I should still get back my seven, all right? So in this case, I'm going to subtract two from both sides. So nine y is equal to 63. If I divide this by nine, then you will see that y is equal to seven. And I'm saying there's only one of these you really need to do. But when you carry out your operations properly, um, you notice that you'll get back the same responses, right? So x is equal to six and um, x is six and y is seven, right? All right, let's look on the final question. All right, so the final question says here that a transformation t, represented by the matrix 0, 1, 1, 0, maps S, which is 2, 5, onto S prime, which is 5, 2, describe fully the single transformation, right? This transformation is actually a reflection, right? And how I would know is that you could see where um, it's a reflection in the line y equal x, right? All right, let's talk about it. So it's a reflection in y equal x. Now, you could look. When you reflect something in y equal x, what happened is, so this would have been the object. So the image is going to take this form where the y will go where the x is and the x will go where the y is. And as you could see, y equal x. You could hear, if you think about what you're saying, y equal x, that means the x becomes the y and the y becomes the x. So you could see right here, it's like, it's, 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 it's like one of those inverse idea. y becomes x, x becomes y. So you're seeing where the 2, 5, will become 5, 2. And as you could see, the, the 2, which was x, becomes the y, and the 5, which was y, becomes the x, right? So it is a reflection in y equal x. Thank you for watching the LMS Concepts. Please look out for more videos. Please like, subscribe, and drop a comment. And if you have any topic that you think you need to see, you could just let me know in the comment below. See you next time. Bye-bye.